Salespeople. They are a wealth of knowledge for a home buyer. Someone that you rely on to help you navigate the many decisions to make when considering a new home. They have seen it all and heard it all. Trust me. So today I'm taking you behind the scenes to see who these people are and what makes them tick. <laughs> Hello. It's okay. Hi, Justin. Hi, Juliana. Hello. Hello, Tracy. Thank you for joining us today. Hi, Chris. Hi. Thanks for coming. I'm happy to be here. Good. We're going to be asking you some questions today, okay? Yes. Sounds okay, you gotta good. You got to answer honestly. I have to promise. Okay. I promise. Okay. Let's start with why did you choose this industry? Well, when I built my first home, which was actually a Qualico home, uh, I fell in love with the industry and the process and uh, knew I wanted to help people find their dream home. You know what? This industry, I always say, kind of chose me. Uh, my father, my uncle were in it. I started working uh, in construction for summers when I was 12 years old, and that led into a whole career. Uh, well, we bought a new house. That's how it all started. We bought a new house. The salesperson that helped us was amazing, um, and she thought I would be good at this. My dad had a, a construction company when I was itty, and so in my younger years, I spent most of my days putting in hard labor for low wages, but then I realized I quite like it, so then I stuck with it and went through all the facets, and here I still am. So anyway, who's interviewing you? Nobody. I don't want to be interviewed. <laughs> all right, let's do it. So welcome, thanks for being here. You're welcome. So tell me, why did you choose this industry? Well, I think it's kind of a running theme today. The industry kind of chose me, as everybody's been saying. Um, also family that's been in the industry growing up. So I've been passionate about homes and design and all things, you know, architecture and houses, basically, for yeah, my whole life. So. I see that in you. Mm -hmm. How long have you been in this industry? It's been about 30 years. I've been in the industry for 19 years. Uh, I've been fortunate enough to be in the industry for five years. I've been in this industry for 23 years. I have been in the industry for just over nine and a half years. What makes you wake up every morning to do this job? Well, my wife and my kids are definitely my biggest motivation, but knowing that my clients are entrusting me with one of the biggest decisions of their life really means the world to me. The challenges. There's always new and exciting challenges. That everything's changing, new products to learn, and we can gain so much knowledge, but the ever-changing market, the ever-changing way a house is built, and everything is really quite exciting. And being able to help uh, new homeowners find, take that knowledge and find the home that's gonna fit them is really rewarding. Um, I, I find with this job, we have such a big responsibility. Like this is one of the largest purchases a person will make in their lifetime. So with that, there's so many things to that that I'm just excited to come and help the next family reach their dream house. Pretty much, I guess it's kind of cliche, you love helping people get into a new home, but it's also that learning something every day. In this job, you never know who's gonna walk in the door. And honestly, it's so much fun because I get to meet new people every single day. I wake up every morning to do this job for the money. <laughs> Honest but true. Honest but true. <laughs> What is your favorite piece at our home model and why? I would say the Quincy. Quincy. The Quincy. The Quincy, uh, because it gives you everything. It has a stunning kitchen, a beautiful ensuite, a large top floor bonus room, and a perfectly located main floor office den. What more could you ask for? I think they're amazing value for the money, and they are amazing floor plans themselves. I love the ensuite being totally separated from the rest of the upper floor and the kitchen, it's, it's beautiful. What is your most memorable home or client and why? I would have to go with a client and uh, they were a big believer in astrology. So I had to sign the purchase contract with them at 1.38 a.m. in the morning at the show home uh, for them to move forward with the deal. But uh, in this industry, you see a lot of different things. I had a client call me at 10 o'clock at night and he wanted help to move a mattress. He didn't have a truck, so his plan was for him to hold one side of the mattress out the window and me to hold the other one on the other side. Long story short, that didn't happen. <laughs> what is the craziest request a client has ever made? The craziest request the client has ever made was in a walkthrough with some prospects who asked me about the possibility of putting bracing uh, in the ceiling of the owner's suite bedroom, uh, which uh, from the discussion and the hints I could only uh, believe was for some sort of 
what's your top piece of advice for a home buyer? Number one, and this has been repeated and should be repeated over and over, get it in writing. What you see isn't necessarily what you're getting. So any salesperson, whatever they can tell you is gonna be more than willing to put it in writing. And the other one is feel confident with the person you're dealing with. If you don't feel comfortable with the salesperson, but you still like the company, there's other salespeople because that's going to be your main contact from start to finish. My top piece of advice would be to ask questions. So you're gonna be asked a lot of questions if your salesperson is any good at figuring out you and getting to know you, but you also need to make sure that you ask the questions and to be open and honest about your answers as well. My top piece of advice is kind of a two-parter. So one would be find out what's the big motivating factor for you to move from your current living situation to the new one and also to get some advice from a mortgage professional to see kind of where your budget is. What is the hardest part of your job? I think the hardest part of our job sometimes is delivering some of the news that maybe is unexpected or I don't want to say bad news but maybe something with some difficulty in there. Um, especially a lot of our clients are really great people and they're really just trying to get their dream home. I would say the hardest part of my job is probably seeing the disappointment on somebody's face if they don't qualify. So they weren't pre-approved pre and they go to get a mortgage and they're not qualified and seeing the disappointment. So that's why I kind of say it's important to do that part of it first. The market, the market changes non-stop. We're always in different market conditions, different economies. And also, like I said before, with the different products we have to learn, it is changing so much that if you blink, you missed it. So we have to always evolve. What keeps you up at night about your job? What keeps me up at night about my job is all those little details about my clients' homes that I don't want them to lose sleep over. I think I just, in general, as a person, I just worry about, you know, is everything, is, is, is this done, is that done? I worry that things are done on time and properly for customers, that's all. What is your go-to pump-up song? Well, it was I Got a Feeling by the Black Eyed Peas, but right now it's La Bamba. ACDC. Back in black. So. Are you able to sing some of it for us now, Ty? No. <laughs> <laughs> I am horrible at lyrics. My go-to pump-up song is anything Metallica. My go-to pump-up song is probably California Love by Tupac. Um, but my cannot skip song is actually Hotel California by the Eagles. This is gonna be, you know, maybe different than a lot of other people. Um, it is from Opera Carmen the bullfighters uh, and the introduction to the act one. It is not very long, uh, but it is, I just have it on repeat today in my car. It's just, yes, it's just an amazing thing that just pumps me up. I can go run a marathon after that. What's your most hated household chore? Weeding. Everything. I, I don't like chores. Cleaning the shower. Ironing. Hate ironing. What's your most used emoji? Smiley face. I probably use it too much. Uh, the thumbs up. My most used emoji is wink. <laughs> Probably the 100, so the 100% because I like to keep it 100 with everyone. What's your favorite room in your house and why? Easily, my dining room. Um, I quite often sit and work there and it is a perfect spot where you have the nice view of the surrounding of our home and actually the really nice view of our whole house. So, yeah, dining room by far. My kitchen. I love my kitchen so much. I, yeah, I, my kitchen is huge. I made it that way. I love to cook. I have tons of counter space. I, I love my kitchen. I would live there if I could. Well, I do live there. You do live there. I do live there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, my favorite room is probably my den because I use it for everything. I use it to maybe film a podcast. I use it to watch TV, catch up on Netflix, Crave, what have you. What's your favorite room in your house and why? Uh, the bonus room. We have movie nights. My daughters both love popcorn. It's just dad's favorite room for snuggling up with the family. Uh, I'm going to give you two because I'm going to say in the winter, it's my family room. In the summer, it's our gazebo. Outside in the sun, having a cup of coffee in the morning. Yeah, it's not in the house, but I'd say it's my favorite room-ish. <laughs> room adjacent. If you could do any other career, what would it be? Uh, probably be a comedian. Yeah, I like to make people laugh and I've taken my dad jokes to grandpa jokes level. I would actually like to be a chef. I love food, I love cooking, uh, I love experiencing food and I'd love to travel the world to experience more of it. I would probably be an influencer. <laughs> what I studied for was to be a math teacher and I think that 
among other things, math teacher, probably that's what I kind of would have gone to, yeah. Any other career is a really tough question because every time I think about doing another career, I'm like, no, I don't want to do another mm. career. I like this job. I think I would love to be a um, crime scene investigator or a private detective, something along that line. Yeah. I just like looking into why something happened or trying to figure out how something happened. What was your dream job as a kid? So I wanted to either be a rock star or a Backstreet Boy, whichever one is easier. Well, you were supposed to sing for us then. You're I'm gonna not, be a rock star. That, I, you know what, if you're good at something, you gotta save it for when it's paid. Uh, my dream job as a kid was a professional athlete, of course. Either hockey or soccer. <laughs> my dream job as a kid, I wanted to be a motivational speaker, which is kind of a strange thing to want to be as a kid, but I used to love like getting up on stage, and getting others all jazzed up. I wanted my mom to get me into figure skating because I wanted to be a figure skater. What's the craziest thing a boss has ever asked you to do? Go to Vegas with him for three days and golf and drink and eat. So that was probably the craziest thing. The craziest thing a boss has ever asked me to do in a previous life, in a previous industry, was with one day's notice and a pregnant wife, uh, pack up, drive to Saskatoon tomorrow, you're there for the next week. She was not happy about that. Uh, no comment. <laughs> we have some viewers in the room. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's the best career advice you've ever received? One is never put your competition down. Because if you put them down, you're standing in the same place. So you always want to rise above. Find a job that challenges you. Because if you don't, you're going to be bored and it's not going to be the right fit. Best piece of career advice I've ever received is no matter what degree or special education a person might have, uh, as long as you decide it so, no one can outwork you. What's the best career advice you've ever received? Do what you love. Um, I think that came from a couple different entities in my own family and uh, if you don't love what you do then you can't instill that passion into the service or product that you're providing to the client at the end of the day as well. What's your greatest achievement in your career? Probably, you know, helping over 1,000 families get into a home and um, winning an award every year that I've been in, the, in sales has probably been a great achievement as far as career-wise. So I've accomplished what I wanted to do there, so I actually enjoy helping other salespeople now to get better. So if I can help somebody else with the knowledge that I've learned, there's no better feeling. I'd say the greatest achievement in my career is the many clients that we've helped over the years that have just felt hopeless and alone and uh, with no options, either because of down payment issues or being told no by their mortgage specialist. It's a great feeling to see the look on their faces after some good advice and some hard work helps them achieve their home buying dreams. I would say for me, my, my greatest achievement is every client that I can make a happy client. Mm -hmm. um, that's why I do it. Probably the words that, that you, you know, we get uh, on an Edmonton uh, level. Um, I think that kind of tells you where you are on the grand scheme of things within the place where, that you operate in the city that you work at, so yeah. I was nominated as one of the five finalists in Edmonton for Rookie of the Year. How many homes have you helped people build in your career? Probably around 250. 71. Uh, in my career, I've been able to help over 70 families get into their dream home. 1,100 to 1,200 probably. I, I have stopped counting a long time ago. I haven't kept track, but it's in between 12 to 1,300. As of today, 1,001. Hundreds? I don't know. I don't count. All of them. Awesome. Thank you so much for your answers. We've learned lots about you today. That's it? That's it. We're all done. Okay. Do you have more? Yet? I always have more to share, but only if I'm asked questions. Well, that just about does it. Buying your new home is a journey and having a solid relationship with your salesperson is key to navigating through it successfully. For questions or to connect with any of our salespeople, be sure to click the link in the description below to speak with our concierge or to make an appointment. So if you're a house hunter looking for new construction, be sure to like and subscribe to be notified of all of our upcoming videos. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Better? No. Please. Fix your hair. We'll get inside. Yeah. Probably, probably from her heart out. Yeah. There you go. Very good. Okay. Um, they want you to ask the answer the question with the question. Oh. Oh yeah. <laughs> no, no, don't start over. We'll just start from. Yeah.